Hi, welcome to the SEO for blogs and video lecture. My name is Cole Field. I'm going to be in your instructor today. Um, we're going to go through both blog SEO and video SEO. We're going to start with blog SEO. Um, if you have any questions or if I go too fast, make sure to tell me to slow down. Um, so we're going to jump into blog SEO first, but before we do that, um, we're going to go over a little bit about what you're going to learn today. First of all, um, like I said, I'm Cole Field. I'm the director of search here at Splash Media. Um, I've been doing SEO for a very long time, uh, both blog SEO, website SEO, local SEO, and video SEO, which is becoming um, a huge part of what SEO is as well. And we're going to go in depth and talk about that uh, later in the lecture. In the class today, uh, we're going to break it down into sections. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to start with SEO for blogs first. Then we're going to move into um, what the objective of your blog is, um, how to select the right key phrases um, for your blogs. Uh, and then we're going to talk more in depth about on-page SEO and off-page SEO. Then we're going to go into the next section, which will be about video SEO. We'll talk about what your objective is for your video, uh, for ranking, what key phrases to select and how to select those. And um, videos and search engine optimization, how are they found, what are the different things that we need to look for um, when we're trying to optimize for a video. And then we'll do a Q&A. So I will have to warn you, I do use a lot of bad analogies um, in this instruction video, so just be prepared for that. Okay, so let's start with on-page and off-page SEO and what's the difference. Um, before I go kind of in-depth into on-page and off-page, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about just what SEO is. A lot of people think SEO is a lot of different things, um, but at core, it's really just four four basic um, pieces. Uh, the first part is foundation. Uh, foundation can be how your site is constructed or your blog is constructed. Uh, it's things like, um, are your links created properly? Is the structure behind the site um, structured properly? Uh, do you have duplicate um, titles or duplicate meta description? It's really important to have a really good foundation on whatever platform you're using. Uh, we suggest WordPress. Uh, for your blog platform, um, and it needs to be uh, constructed and set up properly. And we'll talk a little more in depth later in the lecture about how to do that, but it's really important to start with one, um, a, a good foundation. Uh, the second part is um, how relevant you are. That's the second part of SEO. And relevancy really is the different words that you're targeting, how you're using those on your page, um, how you're using those in your meta descriptions and in your pictures. The third part of SEO is off-page. Um, you'll hear a lot about link building uh, or authority. Um, authority is basically how, m it's, it's like votes. How many people are linking to you? How authoritative are they? We're going to talk a little bit more um, about link building towards the end of the blog SEO section. Um, but it's really important to not only get uh, quality backlinks, but um, a decent amount of quality backlinks to help build the authority up of both your blog or any type of SEO. And the fourth part of SEO, which is really becoming popular, um, and, and it's really becoming uh, something that some uh, that a lot of people in our industry are talking about, is how social impacts um, SEO, from um, Google authorships to sharing links um, socially on Facebook and Twitter. And we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end as well. So, on-page and off-page SEO. So here's one of those bad analogies that I was talking about earlier. Um, to me, a site, whether it's a blog or, or any type of site, but specifically a blog, um, from an on-page perspective, is kind of like a person. Uh, on-page would be how you view yourself if you were the blog, um, how you dress, um, how you do your hair, how you think about yourself internally. Um, it, it's all the things that you can control. What words that you use uh, on your blog or on your blog homepage, um, what words you use in your meta description, the um, the different types of words that you use in your pictures or how you name your file names. Off-page SEO, if we were thinking about it like a person, would be how other people view you. Uh, how, do they think you're trustworthy? Do they think that you're authoritative? Do people in our industry or do other sites that are authoritative um, link back to you because you share um, interesting information that people want to connect with? Um, and basically what that means is links. Uh, how trustworthy you are, and how many people are sharing your information uh, socially. 
So here's another bad analogy. SEO is kind of like a recipe. There's a lot of different ways to um, to, to approach SEO. Um, I kind of like to think about it like making cookies. Um, there's a lot of different types of recipes for cookies. You can make chocolate chip cookies, um, walnut cookies, uh, oatmeal raisin. Um, but at core, it's all the same information. Uh, you still need flour, you still need eggs, you still need to use certain keywords in certain places. Uh, you still need to create your URL structure a certain way. So again, there's, there's lots of different approaches to SEO. Um, today we're going to cover uh, my approach and Splash's approach to SEO, um, which is at core, you know, basic SEO, but we'll give you some extra tips and, and suggestions that we found um, helpful for our industry. And another great analogy is SEO is also like a recipe, it's like a checklist. It's just making a list of different objectives and goals that you want to reach and then rinsing and repeating every time. Um, at, at learning SEO myself, um, that, was, that was the best way to learn, see um, what I got the most success with. Um, anytime that you can uh, take your information, your data, your analysis from Google Analytics or Google Webmaster Tools and take that information and use that next time you're targeting your goals in the beginning of um, your SEO process will help to be successful over and over. All right, so let's jump into the blog SEO part. So why your blog gets no traffic? Um, I know a lot of people in our industry say that content is king, and I definitely believe that strong content is very important both socially um, and for optimization purposes, but it has to be relevant content. So when people say content is king, I always say, well, relevant content is king. Um, making sure that you're targeting um, this great content that you're writing, this, this Shakespearean amazing uh, content that you want to share with your audience with specific keywords will help you be successful not only um, with people sharing your content, but seeing your content when you're looking at specific services or products that you have to offer that you're targeting blogs for. We're going to go in depth and talk about how you kind of build those goals and that structure before you really start your SEO process. So why should I care? Why, why is it important to do search engine optimization? Well, like we were talking about a second ago, um, ranking high both in Google, Bing, and Yahoo is extremely important. If you're writing amazing content, you want to make sure that it's seen. Um, if you're writing great content and nobody's finding it, nobody's seeing it, uh, then you have a, a less chance of being successful or increasing your ROI. Uh, obviously, generating leads is extremely important. We'll talk a little bit about um, how to not only write great content and optimize it, but, uh, but also how do you put a call to action into your blog? Um, how do I ask or, or start sending people down that sales funnel as well? and increasing traffic to your blog too, which is a part of SEO. The more traffic that you can get to your site, obviously that's going to be a, um, a signal to Google, this is important, a lot of people are, are viewing this, I need to share this with uh, other people in our target audience for the specific keywords that you're targeting that are relevant to you. So like I said, it's, SEO is like a checklist or a, or a recipe, so we're going we're gonna to talk about it just like that today. We're going to go through very specific tasks um, that you can go through and make a list uh, of how to approach SEO. Um, so the first most important part of SEO, uh, I used to think that um, title tags were the most important part of SEO. That's, that's not correct at all. The most important SEO objective is having objectives and having goals. If you don't have goals set before you start your SEO process, you're going to do a lot of work with a little return. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit for a second about how do you figure out what those goals are. Uh, the basic way or, or a simplistic way to kind of sit down and put together what your goals need to be or make a list of your services and your products that you offer. Um, if I'm a shoe store and I sell blue shoes and red shoes and purple shoes and green shoes uh, or if I sell different styles of shoes, tennis shoes or heels or boots. Um, I'm going to make a list of all these different products and services I offer and I'm going to weigh them out from what's going to bring me the both, most return on investment or what does my company mainly focus on and I'm going to create or tie those to different keywords um, based on three factors that we'll talk about in our next slide. But it's just really important to first sit down and figure out what are my goals, what do I want to be found for 
um, and they need to be very specific types of goals that the products and services that you offer. The next section or the next part of SEO is figuring out what keywords that you want to target. So the best way to do that is after you've defined your goals, you have specific products and services that you know that you want to offer and you've made a list, um, it's time to tie those to different keywords. So at Splash, we target three different um, filters or factors to look at um, when we're targeting keywords. The first thing that we want to look at is how much or how high of search volume does that keyword have? Um, we're going to go in in a couple of minutes and talk a little bit about how you do that. What kind of tools do I use to figure out who's searching for which keyword? Um, but it's really important to target words that actually have searches. If you're targeting a word that your gut kind of tells you, hey, I think this is the word that people are looking for, um, it could turn out you do a search that no one, no one's really searching for that. A lot of times as, um, as a business owner, um, we get kind of involved or so, so into our own products and services, we kind of forget to look at it from um, other people's perspectives. So it's really important to use tools that show um, how many people are actually looking for your products and services so you can target the right words to get the best return on investment. Um, you also have to look at, um, is that keyword highly converting? So there's really two different types of keywords um, that, you can, that you can target. There's a highly searched keyword which is a word that a lot of a lot of people search for, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're looking for your specific product or service. Um, a great example would be if if going back to the shoe example, if I sold shoes, um, doesn't necessarily mean I want to rank for shoes. Uh, that's obviously something that I have, and, and and I can and I have products and services that are shoes, um, but that doesn't mean that someone necessarily is looking to buy shoes from me. They could be looking for information about shoes or maybe they're looking at the history of shoes. Um, we also need to look at other types or other kinds of um, keywords that are highly converting keywords. A highly converting keyword um, has, is usually, usually a longer tailed keyword, which means it has more phrases or more terms um, aligned with your core term. So an example would be, going back to the shoe analogy, um, blue shoes, or red shoes or a very specific type of shoes. It could be like blue boots or, or, or a specific brand. It's just more relevant. And that's what we call a highly converting keyword. Um, the difference between the two is a highly searched keyword like shoes, a lot of people are searching for. A highly converting keyword, let's say like um, blue boots for sale or buy blue boots, that's something very specific that you have, hopefully um, that, you're, that you have as one of your products that you're offering. So the amount of searches are going to be much lower for a word like that, but the, uh, the percentage of conversions are going to be much higher just for the sheer fact that it's something exactly that you're offering and it's exactly what someone's looking for and it's matching those two concepts together. So how do we figure out what the right keyword is? Well, like I said, we use three different factors to uh, figure out what the right keyword is um, for each goal that you have. First of all, you have to look at the amount of searches like we mentioned before. So what I usually do is, after I have my list of goals, is I'll um, target just one goal to start. Um, let's say it's blue shoes, and I'll use a tool, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, to figure out what are the different versions of that keyword and which one has the most amount of searches. Once I find the word that I feel like, or a couple words that I feel like, um, have a, a decent amount of search volume, the next thing I'm gonna look at is, how much competition does that word have? If I don't have a lot of authority yet, if I'm new uh, to blogging, uh, the chances of me trying to rank for something that's highly competitive might be extremely low. So I need to factor that in as well. And I also wanna ask myself, is this word relevant? Going back to um, highly searched or highly converting keywords, again, a word like shoes might not necessarily just be relevant to me, but something like buy blue shoes could be extremely relevant to me. So we always look at those three factors. Um, just because it's the most highly searched keyword doesn't mean it's going to have the um, have a lo have a lower amount of competition or low enough for us to achieve. And it also doesn't mean that it's relevant to um, what we're trying to accomplish. So as long as we have that that equation, those three um, things that we're thinking about, let's get back. Um, it's going to help us create what we call a money phrase. And your money phrase is your is your targeted phrase. That's the phrase that you want to target for each blog post that you're creating. Um, I think it's very important. A lot of people ask me, how many keywords should I target um, in my blog? I feel like the best answer is just one. 
one keyword should really be what you want to target. And the reason that I suggest that is because you don't want to saturate your SEO. The more keywords that you add in to each blog post, um, in my opinion, the less of a chance that you have to be relevant to just that one keyword. Um, we're going to talk about supporting keywords and how to use um, supporting keywords also so you're not keyword stuffing, which is something, um, which is an industry term that a lot of people use. Um, but I think it's really important to really just focus on one goal and one keyword per blog. So going through the, the key phrase selection process, um, the first thing I do, like I said, is I look at searches. And the way that I do that is I use the Google keyword tool um, and I just put in some ideas. So I take that, that first goal I have and I just start tossing words or ideas that I kind of have um, based on is this going to be relevant or do I think this is going to turn into um, sales for me. Um, or if I'm trying to be a, um, an industry leader in something, is this something that someone's actually looking for that I can provide knowledge on? Um, I use the Google Keyword Tool and I put some of those ideas in the Google Keyword Tool and I'll show you some examples of how that, how that looks. And from that, I, um, I see search volume. So you can see um, over on the uh, far right hand side, there's a section called Local Monthly Search um, and that's basically how many people are searching for each keyword in the United States per month. There's also a global monthly search, so if you're doing international searches or you're trying to get international ranking, that might be something that you want to look at, but we're going to mainly focus on local monthly searches. And uh, after I have some of those ideas um, set out, I sort out by local monthly searches. So if I actually click on the top um, local monthly searches, it'll put in order. This is obviously not in descending order, the example I'm showing you. Um, but if I click on that, it'll put this in descending order, and that's how I look at search volume, and then I go through my other steps of competition and relevancy as well. Um, how much competition uh, does my keyword have? So there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I use some proprietary tools um, that we have here at Splash, but um, a quick way to look at competition um, is to take that keyword and do what we call an exact match search. So if you actually go to Google, take your keyword and go to Google and put your word in quotes, you can see how many other search results are also coming up for yours. And it gives you an idea of what a, how, how competitive is this word. So you can see here I use the word social media in an exact match search and you can see there's about 387 uh, million other results. That's probably pretty competitive and I might not want to go after a term like that. Um, I, the, it's, to give you an exact number of what's too competitive and what's not is hard because it all depends on how competitive your industry is in general. Obviously if I sell or a product or a service that someone um, that not a lot of people in our industry know about or isn't, like I said, very known, um, I might not have very much competition so it might be easy for me to achieve something that, that I couldn't with another word that a lot of people know about and a lot of, or a service that a lot of people are also trying to compete with. Uh, but it's just a good way to kind of get an idea of how competitive a word is. Okay, so now we're going to move into the actual on-page part of SEO. Um, there's a lot of different factors to think about. Uh, the, the first, what I feel like the most important factor from an on-page perspective, not the most important factor of SEO, but the most important on-page perspective, is your title tag. Um, your title tag is extremely important, and this isn't the title of your blog, which is different. We'll talk about the difference between the two in a second, but this is your actual title tag. Um, this is what search engines will see um, and look at probably more than anything else in this equation, because that's what we're really talking about. It's a, it's a huge math equation uh, um, of a checklist looking at why should I serve up one um, blog or one listing over another. So. Um, a couple things to keep in mind. I like to lead off with my keyword um, first in my in my meta title. Um, I think that search engines read um, just like people, left to right and up to down. So the if you're leading off that word, you're putting more of an emphasis on that you feel like that that word is important. Also, you want to try to stay within 70 characters or less. Um, just a, just a tip. This is something that I do. I capitalize the first letter of every word that I put in my title. Um, I know that's not necessarily grammatically correct, and this is just something that I like to do, but I feel like it catches the user's eye because this will actually be what they see when they're in the search engine looking uh, for specific keywords. Um, and you can see an example um, below, I put my key phrase and then I use a line, and then sometimes I'll lead off with a brand name. I just think that's a really simple way to write a title tag. So here's an example behind the scenes. 
Um, in this example, I'm showing a, the Yoast plugin. Um, I'm going to show two different plugins throughout, um, but Yoast is um, a plugin that I really like. All-in-one SEO plugin is a great one too. Um, what I like about the Yoast plugin is that um, it tells me if I'm doing SEO kind of right or wrong to some degree. Um, obviously, it can't tell me if I'm picking the right word, but it can tell me if I'm following the right recipe for that word. So Yoast pl plugin would definitely suggest it. Um, we just wrote a blog on the SMU Splash blog. Um, we put up, I believe, uh, yesterday. So if you'd like, after this, definitely go and check that out, and it'll tell you the setup on how to set up the Yoast plugin and configure it correctly so you can get the most out of it. So you can see here, um, if we look at the um, SEO title, that's actually where we're at putting in the title tag. Um, and we will give us a preview of what that's going to look like. Um, you can see up at the snippet preview. So we can see what it's going to look like in the search engine. So keep in mind, this is going to be the dominant word um, that someone's looking for. There's an example kind of closed up what that looks like. And it also has a character counter in the, uh, in the Yoast plugin, which I really like. And here's an example of what that looks like externally. Okay, so your blog title, or really what a blog title is in WordPress, is an H1 tag. An H1 tag is um, very important as well. It's another key indicator that um, this is something very specific that you want Google to look at. Um, there's also H2 tags, and really what that means is heading one and heading two. Um, I like to try to use my keyword and lead off with it if I can in my H1 tag. Sometimes that's kind of hard because you want to be, um, you want it to make sense, and to use a keyword sometimes in your um, in your H1 tag might not make sense for the actual content. But as much as possible, I like to try to do that as well. Um, I, I like to lead off with that in the H1 tag. I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So here's a blog that you can see that the title is Aircraft Engine Maintenance, and that's also the keyword we were targeting for this. And you can see behind the scenes, I'm showing you an example of how we let off with the keyword um, as well. Uh, if you want to add more H1 tags or H2 tags, the way to do that is in, um, click on, and this is the all-in-one SEO plugin that we were talking about earlier, which is something I also like. You can click on what's called the kitchen sink icon. When you click on the kitchen sink icon, it gives you the ability to add more H1 or H2 tags. And you can see below there's a drop down menu for H1 and H2. Meta descriptions. Meta descriptions really aren't um, important to SEO anymore. They used to be, but it's not something really search engines look at anymore. But people look at them. Um, so I like to really take advantage of that. Uh, as much as possible, you want to try to get as many clicks. Um, to your site because that is important to SEO. That's going to be an indicator to Google, hey, people are looking at this. Maybe I need to move this up or down depending on how many people are actually um, viewing this information. Um, so how do I write a meta description? Well, again, I, I really like to lead off with my keyword if I can. Um, anytime you uh, put a keyword in your title or your meta description, when it's seen um, in Google search engines, and I'll show you an example of what that looks like, um, it will bold that keyword. So that not, might not necessarily be an SEO piece, but it's definitely something that can help users um, identify with the word that they typed in, so it's more psychological. Um, I also like to hit some um, specific things when I'm writing my, um, my meta description as well. I like to try to stay within 155 characters. 160 is the limit. Sometimes Google gets tricky by throwing up some more ads, um, and it can, it can uh, truncate or push down some of the search results. Um, so I like to use 155 just to be safe. If not, I won't see my full uh, meta description. Um, I also like to treat meta descriptions like ad copy. I do paid search as well, and um, I like to write it more like uh, you're writing um, kind of ad copy to some degree because I want people to get interested and want to click on uh, my specific post or my specific site out of the sea of other information that they're seeing in their search results. So I like to use the key phrase in the meta description. Um, I like to work the site name if I can. If there's some type of offer, something that would be interesting for them to want to read that, if you're if you're talking about, um, you know, if you're providing some kind of knowledge or information or how to, or if you have some kind of discount um, that you're talking about in your blog or some kind of new product release and how it works, uh, I like to lead off with uh, that as well in my meta description. And there should be a call to action if you want them to click on it and say, hey, click here, read more. Um, and in my meta description, I like to capitalize. This is just me, something I prefer. I like to capitalize the first letter of every word. Again, that's not grammatically correct, but I think it catches users' eye.
Here's an example of a meta description behind the scenes. You can see it's right under the title tag. Um, here's what it would look like in search engines, and you can see some of those words are actually bolded based on the search criteria that I put in to get this result. The URL. The URL is extremely important. You can control um, in a blog, in WordPress specifically, um, how your URL is seen. Obviously, you'll pick your own domain name. Um, anytime, you know, from a domain name standpoint, we're really not going to go in depth and talk about that, but if your keyword is in your domain name, that will definitely help you from a search aspect. So you might want to think about that when you're picking your domain name. Um, but obviously, from a marketing standpoint, you want to pick something that people will remember and that's interesting for your brand name. So I would definitely suggest focusing on both when you're when you're looking at that. Um, but you can control um, the blog's actual URL post. Um, I like to put my keyword in the URL structure in just my keyword. If not, WordPress will um, take my title, whatever I titled my blog, and add that as the URL structure. So you can you can change it. It's really easy. I'll show you in a second. Um, and I like to use the the actual keyword as the URL structure, and I like to separate it by dashes. The reason I separated by dashes is because um, it makes it easier for search engines to understand that I'm talking about different phrases to kind of break it up for them. Um, da a dash is kind of the universal space, both from HTML um, and search engines when they're reading uh, different keywords or information. So keep that in mind when you're um, adding your keywords separated by dashes as well. Um, here's an example of a blog that we were trying to rank uh, aircraft engine maintenance for, and you can see that there are dashes between the two. And here's what it looks like behind the scenes. Um, if I wouldn't have manipulated that permalink, it would have populated with aircraft engine maintenance, fuel nozzle maintenance. So you can see that I just changed that to, to say aircraft engine maintenance separated by dashes. So where should you put your key phrase in your block? Well, Google's going to um, look to see what's most important. Just just like um, humans, uh, search engines or bots or, or spiders, whatever you like to call them, um, they read left to right and up to down as well. So I like to lead off with uh, the keyword in at least the, 50, the first 50 to 100 words of the blog post, um, preferably the first 50 if you can. Um, something that I didn't add into this slide, and this is kind of an extra a bonus, is I like to bold that keyword as well. Um, bold is kind of like an H1 tag too in the fact that it's showing importance on a certain word. So whenever you use that first keyword in the first 50 to 100 words, you might consider bolding it as well. Here's an example we actually um, use to hyperlink that word, which is fine to do as well. We'll talk a little bit about how to hyperlink um, in a couple slides later and how to internal use internal linking um, to gain or share what we call link juice, which we'll talk about too. Um, but here's an example of how we use it in the first 50 to 100 words. How many times should I repeat my keyword throughout my blog? Well, you want to first never repeat your word too many times where it doesn't make sense in your blog post, um, but a good rule is four to six times. You never want to exceed 25, not, not that most people would ever exceed 25 uh, times using a keyword in the actual blog post, but four to six times is a good number uh, amount of times to use that, use that in your post. Um, I'll show you an example of how we kind of pepper that in. You can see we use it in the title, and then we use it throughout the blog um, in different places. It just it just spreads that word around and basically makes our blog more relevant, um, which from an on-page perspective is extremely important in the body, so Google knows what we're trying to target or what we're about. Supporting keywords. Okay, so a lot of people have asked me what's keyword stuffing and how do I make sure I don't keyword stuff. Um, what I like to do is I, I definitely pick one keyword that I want to target for each post, um, but I also use that four to six times like we just talked about. But then I'll pick supporting keywords. And the way to pick supporting keywords is um, I use the Google Keyword Tool, and I'll show you an example in a second how we do that. And I like to pick three to six supporting keywords that are relevant to the word that I'm trying to rank for. It's really important because the more relevant my blog can be, um, the more um, from a relevancy standpoint or from an on-page perspective, Google knows what my information is about. So here's an example. We're going to go back to that social media example. Put the keyword in the Google Keyword Tool, which is a free tool if you're not familiar with it. Um, and then I can 
hit sort by relevancy, which is different than, and this will be the default as well, which is different than when we sorted by search volume earlier. And it'll put in order from what um, Google feels is the most relevant to the least relevant. And that's how I select my terms that I want to use uh, based on that. Now when I look through these, some of these might not make sense for what I'm trying to post about. So if they don't, I don't use those. Um, but obviously from a checklist standpoint or from an algorithm standpoint, I try to use the most relevant words I can as possible and, and uh, pepper those in throughout my post. Your images. How do you make sure that your image is optimized? This is really important. Sometimes um, it can it can be extremely important depending on your industry from the sheer fact that people do a lot of image searches these days. Um, I know that we had uh, some specific blogs that I've worked on in the past where we did good image optimization and that drove a lot of our traffic because people were looking at our infographics that we were showing on blog post or different diagrams that we created. So it's really, really important. The most important part of image optimization is naming your file separated by dashes before you ever even upload it to WordPress. Um, a lot of people don't think about that. Uh, they, they think, oh, I'm going to do all my optimization just within my blog, but it's really important to, to um, whatever key phrase you're trying to target for that post, make sure to name the file itself separated by dashes before you upload it. Um, use the image alt tag as well. That'll be a section within, um, depending on whatever plugin you're using, um, that you'll have the ability to, to change as well. And then Google also looks at closely tied words around a picture, so your image caption, it's important to use your keyword there as well. Here's an example behind the scenes in the all-in-one SEO plugin. You can see here's the image and you have a place you can put the title tag, the alt tag, and the caption as well. How long should my blog be? Um, well, obviously you want to write your blog as, as little or, or as long as it makes sense to. But from a search engine standpoint, a minimum of 300 words is a good number to write your blog post for. Uh, Google wants to serve up just enough information for people to um, get what they need, but sometimes long posts um, might not necessarily get searched or, get, or shorter posts for that matter, uh, might not have enough relevancy or enough data for Google to make um, a good assessment if this is relevant to search their audience. Okay, so this is a really important part, and I'm going to try not to go through it too fast, but we're going to catch up because we still have to do video SEO as well. So um, categories, tags, and keywords. This confuses a lot of different people. I get a lot of questions about this all the time. What's the difference between them? How do, how do I know what to put where? Um, so we're going to go through that real quick, and hopefully this analogy that I'm going to, going to give you here in a second will make sense. But first, I'm just going to go through what each one is. So categories are just like they sound. They're categories for your blog. Um, I feel like you know they they are really important from a user perspective, but they're really important from an SEO perspective too. Um, the Yoast plugin, which um, I mentioned in the, in the blog post that we've just put up, really can help you capture on how to create good categories and how to set up your category structure first. Um, but your categories need to be whatever your goal words or your goal keywords are that you're targeting. Um, this would be high level goals that you have. You don't want to have too many categories either. So let's give some examples. Let's say, I, let's go back to the shoe example. Let's say I sell boots and I sell um, tennis shoes and I, sh and I sell heels and I sell, um, you know, running shoes. Those would be categories. Those would be high level categories. I might sell different kinds, blue, red, purple, or different brands. Um, but categories are more high level, so it's helping people take information and, and categorize it very quickly, but it helps search engines too understand, because behind the scenes it builds a structure of your blog. So here's an example in one of the plugins that we use um, how categories can be seen. You can actually add categories before you ever even post anything. This can be something when you're defining your goals that you can add upfront into your blog behind the scenes, and it'll even give you a place that you can write little descriptions about your category that can help with search engines too. Here's an example of what it looks like in an actual post. You can see that there is a section marked categories and I can select whichever category is relevant to that blog. Um, so if I'm writing about aircraft engine maintenance, if I have a category that's about aircraft engine maintenance, that would be relevant um, to this post. So I only want to choose one that's relevant to my post. Tags. Tags are kind of a sub-level of categories. They're, they're subcategories. Um, they're not as important from uh, a search engine standpoint, but they are important for a user. Um, so this helps define more in-depth, like we talked about, I gave you an example a second ago about the shoes, about boots and tennis shoes. This would be more specific about colors, 
um, or even um, different types of or different types of running shoes if they're different types of boots. So it's just a subcategory of information. You can see an example at the bottom where you can actually place your tag. The next part is keywords. So keywords don't really have an importance um, in search engines anymore. Um, keywords are are something that search engines used to look at when they were trying to figure out how to categorize um, or serve up uh, different information based on relevancy. But really, search engines don't look at that anymore. Some smaller search engines still kind of do, but none of the none of the big search engines do. If anything, keywords are um, a place that someone can go into your meta description and see what words that you're using and learn from that. So keep that in mind when you're adding keywords um, into your blog behind the scenes. The only thing that I really use keywords for um, is a reminder on what I was trying to target my post for uh, or if someone else, if I'm showing someone else how to write a blog post um, when, they're, when I'm first starting out, I might show them to focus on the keyword section to remind them, hey, I, this was my target goal for this. Um, but just keep in mind, it's, it's not something that a search engine really looks at anymore. So what are the differences between the um, between each one. So here's an example. So categories, if we had if we had a um, cooking blog, categories would be like baking tips, grilling tips, crock pot recipes. Tags would be like pasta, beef, chicken, and keywords would be very specific. Sp uh, spaghetti carbone, pasta primavera, very specific to what someone was looking for. So just different levels of categorization, but categories are really the most important out of the three in my opinion. Internal links. Um, how do I link internally within a blog? So I'm not going to go in depth and talk about a whole process. I'm going to talk more specifically about um, just how how to functionally do this. Um, it's really important to internal link because then you share, what, for lack of a better word, link juice throughout your site um, or throughout your blog. Um, anytime that I, I target something, I want to make sure whatever I'm pointing to um, is relevant to what I'm trying to achieve. So. Uh, if I have a post that's about, let's say, um, going back to our shoe analogy, um, shoes, and I have one post that's about red shoes, and I have another post that's about blue shoes, I might internally link those because it's all relevant to shoes. Um, if I have another section that's about boots, and I have one post that's about purple boots, and another one that's about brown boots, I might link to those because they're relevant to boots. It's all about how you build out your goals and your structure, um, but I'm going to show you functionally how you can actually link internally. So you can see here um, we've linked the word history of aviation to another blog post. Um, it's basically just taking that information here, I'll show you kind of a closer up, just taking a word that we feel like is relevant to the other post and hyperlinking that word or that series of terms um, to a post that we feel needs link juice or we want to um, share authority with to that other post that's relevant. Okay, so uh, so that was everything from an on-page perspective. Backlinks are really what we would talk about from an off-page perspective. How do I get backlinks? What are backlinks? Uh, so backlinks are basically links from other sites um, linking back to your blog post or your blog as a whole. Um, the more relevant or qual qual quality from an authority perspective that, that those are, uh, the more authority or more link juice that that's going to give to your post and your site as a whole. Uh, backlinks are extremely important. Um, but they need to be quality backlinks. There's a lot of different ways to get backlinks, so I'm not going to really go in depth about to talk about how to get backlinks, but I am going to show you an example. Um, here is the actual website um, of this um, this blog. We've actually linked the blog homepage in an image to create a backlink back to that po uh, to that blog itself. So a really uh, a great way to start out with if your blog is separate than your website um, would be to link your um, website to the blog because that's any authority that your website has already created that's going to help create authority to your blog as well. If you have any other partners or other companies that are willing to also do the same thing because you have relevant information to what they'd like to share, that would be a great way to get backlinks too. So broadcasting your blog. So we talked a little bit about um, social too. So uh, one of the, I broke down SEO into four major parts a moment ago. I don't know if, or when I first started, um, I talked about how it was foundation, on page, and off page. So we talked about on page and off page, and a little about foundation. And if you have the right plugins, 
foundation really can is something that kind of go by itself. Um, a lot of tools out there. There's a lot of plugins that you can use, like um, Yoast or All-in-One SEO plugin that help you set up your foundation properly from the beginning. Um, but on-page and off-page was what we really mainly focused on a moment ago. But from a social aspect, that's the fourth. Um, a lot of people think, oh, I have I have social sites. I have a Facebook page. I have a Twitter account, um, and and it's connected to or pointing to my blog or to my um, to my website. So I'm okay. I am using social. It's not really what we mean when we say um, uh, social interaction as a big part of SEO. It's really sharing your links, um, whether it's a website or it's a blog. So it's really important to share it and make sure that other people are sharing it, get engagement, writing engaging posts to get shares, asking engaging questions. Um, the more that something's shared, that's a key indicator to search engines now that, hey, this is something people are really talking about in real life that's really interesting. And they're looking at the words that are associated with that post too. So if you work your keywords in or positive words around that link, um, Google's gonna look at those different factors to determine if this is, from a um, social perspective, something they wanna share. Some really good resources that I use, um, SEO Voice, Search Engine Land is great, uh, SEO Moz, I'm a huge fan of SEO Moz if you're looking for resources to learn more about um, SEO and the Splash Media blog, we post things all the time. Uh, like I said, there's a blog post right now to talk about how to configure the Yoast plugin. Definitely suggest going to check that out. All right, so we're going to move into the video SEO section now. Um, why do your videos not get any views? So just like we talked about why your blog doesn't get any views, um, it's it's really important to create good video content. Um, but if it's not optimized properly and you're not sharing it socially, then no one's going to see it. So we're going to talk real quickly about how the best approach for um, video SEO, and I call it video SEO, not YouTube SEO, for a very specific reason. We'll talk a little bit about why I do that. Um, so why should I care? Same thing. High ranking in search engines, especially with video, is extremely important. We're in a time where people like to be fed information, not have to search for it. Um, video, um, online video is growing. Um, there's a lot of different um, Tools now, for instance, uh, we have Apple TV, and um, there's a lot of new tools that are coming out where people can actually see online video in their homes now. So it's it's growing, and it's growing very fast. Um, so it's really important to understand the concept of video SEO because it can help increase um, your ROI and kind of get ahead of um, that wave or that trend of online video. And it can help increase sales, um, but it also can help um, get get more views to both your blog. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit too how to integrate both uh, blog SEO and uh, video SEO or blog content and SEO content together to work together. So again, SEO is a checklist, just like I talked about before. So we're going to go through what that checklist is. So again, most important part of any any marketing objective, in my opinion, but any SEO objective is making sure that you have goals. So same approach. I make a list of all the products and services that I offer. Um, or if I'm wanting to be an um, industry leader in a certain field, I make a list of whatever type of goals that I have, and then I'm going to tie those to keywords, just like we were talking about earlier. And I do that same process. I look up what, what terms are searched the most based on relevancy, uh, based on competition, and based on um, search volume. So same approach we took to the blog SEO a moment ago. Once I have the keywords established that I'm looking for, um, I make sure that, and this is the most important part of video SEO after defining your goals, um, I make sure that my file name for my video, not after I upload it, but my file name for my video is the keyword separated by dashes. It's really, really important. And here's an example of how we do that. I put key dash phrase dot whatever your file name is. Um, this is something a lot of people miss, so make sure that you, um, you remember this, if anything, this one uh, piece of information for video SEO. Your title, your video title. Um, just like uh, blog titles are extremely important, video titles are extremely important. Again, I like to lead off with my keyword. Um, I take a little bit of a different approach to video SEO as far as how I write my titles. I have a, a, a 1.5 to 2 keyword rule. So what that means is that I take my key phrase, let's say I have a video that I want to rank for. Um, and I'll show you an example in a second of what that looks like. Um, I'll take that keyword and maybe a part of that keyword, let's say that it's more than one word, three or four terms, 
I'll, I might take another section of that and add it into the title as well. It's just making my title even more relevant. Um, that's the approach I take with video SEO based on um, a lot of different testing that I've done that I've seen um, helps increase my video SEO. And then also you have a 100 character limit. And this is again something that I do that's just my preference. I always, it's not grammatically correct, I always capitalize the first letter of um, each one of my words because I think it helps users kind of identify uh, my text over other text. So here's an example of what that looks like. So let's say my keyword was physicians insurance company. You can see that there's another part of the word that I use, physicians insurance, after the brand name. Um, I just feel like it makes my title more relevant. I've done a lot of testing without it and I've seen better results every time that I've used this. Your description. How should I write my description? It's very similar to how you would take an approach to writing um, the post or, or the blog body when we were talking about blog SEO. Um, I try to, um, the only difference is I lead off with my keyword in my description. The reason I do that is, um, if you're, new, if you're new to YouTube or you're new to video SEO, and YouTube is really the base where, where I'm doing video SEO at, because that's Google's tool. Uh, anytime I can use a tool that Google has, uh, I'm going to take advantage of that because obviously it's going to, or I would feel like it's going to give it more um, uh, authority than, an, than another tool. Um, but basically, I, when I'm writing my description, you might, you might be looking at it, YouTube from your channel perspective, um, but most people will be seeing it from, um, from not your channel perspective. They'll just see the video itself or they'll see it in search engines. Um, they'd have to actually go to your channel and see it. So if you're looking at it from an engagement perspective, you're probably going to get a lot more visits to your channel, but an actual video might not appear the same way you're looking at it from your channel perspective. So keep that in mind because um, it's really important to understand how people are going to see your information so you know um, how you need to optimize it or or is it getting your message across that you think that you're getting across. Um, so a lot of times I'll do searches for my actual video um, with the keyword, so I'll find my video and watch it um, from the perspective of a user to kind of see, okay, well, what am I telling them to do? How am I telling them to do it? But the reason I'm, I'm explaining this is because um, I lead off with the keyword in my description because it, it will be seen above the fold. Um, YouTube has a little section where you can click and it'll say more information and it'll expand your description. Um, but if I lead off with a word, I never have to worry about that. It's harder for search engines or crawlers to go underneath something like that, like a, a show more information because they have to go into another section. It's very easy for them to read information that's just displayed. So anything I can keep what I call above that fold um, and it's keyword centric, I try to um, because it's just going to make it easier for search engines to read more, more about what my video is about because you can't necessarily watch the video and understand what it's about. So I have to use um, as many words or, or as possible when I can so I can create indicators to make that video relevant and worth serving. So um, I always lead off with the keyword first. I try to use the keyword three to six times um, within my video description. Um, I also use supporting keywords. I use that same process. I find relevant keywords and we'll talk a little bit about that too in a second. I use those two to five times. Uh, not necessarily two to five key supporting keywords but I use them two to five times in my description. And um, my title is limited to 5,000 characters, so there's plenty of room to write what you need. And I also add the URL for whatever I'm trying to accomplish, wherever my point of conversion is, wherever I'm trying to send somebody after they watch my video, whether it's my blog, my website, some kind of form fill. Um, I always put that above the fold too with my keyword. So if, if um, someone doesn't hit show more or see more of my description, they'll always see my URL. And I'll show you some examples of what that looks like. So you can see here, the word we were trying to rank for was social media software, and we followed it by uh, um, using the um, the URL we wanted someone to visit right after that. And then you can see that it says show more. That's what we were talking about, The uh, where you have to click to see farther into the description. You have to use the, um, the HTTP also in YouTube description or your um, link won't be clickable. So keep that in mind. And you can see once you hit show more, we've used it multiple times in the description. Um, just going to point that out a couple different places. We also go through the relevancy process just like we did before. Um, social media solutions, social media software. You can see social media, mar uh, social media marketing software. These were other supporting terms that I chose that I felt were relevant to what we were trying to, um, to accomplish. And then we added those in as well. 
tags. Okay, so this is really important too, so I just want to make sure that um, I say that before I get into this. Tags are important in the fact that you shouldn't use too many. Um, it's, it's kind of the, the same thing. You want to have one goal or one targeted keyword um, for your video as well. But you can't just put one tag in. So how many tags do you put in, where do you put them in, what's the process? Here's my recipe or my process for creating tags for YouTube videos. Um, the first thing that I do is whatever keyword, the goal keyword that I was trying to target for that video, I'll lead off of that as my first tag. And I'll also make sure to put that in quotes or create what's called exact tags. I think YouTube automatically does this for you, but if not, I use quotes around my tags. Um, then I use two supporting words. Whatever the two most relevant words were, using the Google Keyword Tool, those are the words that I follow with um, after my goal keyword in the tags. So I have a total of three different tags, all three with exact tags, leading from my goal to um, the two that are most relevant as well. And this is just showing my process for that. You can see these are the two words we picked. Um, sometimes I might not pick, even though this is what Google is telling me is the most relevant, I also have to think about it from a user perspective and my brand perspective. Um, so I didn't necessarily use the exact r most highest relevant words that Google was telling me. Not because I don't believe that it will help me, just because of the sheer fact that I have to also think about it from a client perspective or a brand perspective as well. And you can see here that's what that would look like externally. Um, it's really important to use annotations in videos as well. Um, anytime that YouTube is saying, hey, there's other fun tools or fun toys I want you to use here as well, um, I would take advantage of that. I would definitely think that would help increase um, your search engine optimization, even for the sheer fact that it's how a lot of times I use it, um, annotations to get engagement. So here are four types of annotations that I usually focus on. Um, a like annotation, which I'm asking someone to like uh, my video, because the more engagement I can get in the video, that's definitely going to be an indicator to YouTube and to Google. Um, this is interesting information. The share annotation too, just saying, hey, uh, share my video, and making sure they understand where that link is. Um, the comment annotation, these are all the same types of annotations, I'm just giving them very specific names, because these are the actions I'm suggesting that you put in there. So asking people for somebody for, for comments in an annotation, and a subscription annotation. Um, so I'm going to show you some examples of what those look like. So you can see here, it's an annotation, a little bubble that pops up, and we're asking um, for comments below. The more comments that we can get, specifically if they're relevant, that will definitely increase our video SEO. So we'll views, likes, um, and shares. Some other examples you can see, please subscribe, and I, and I put that next to where the subscribe button is too. It helps visually help people understand where they need to go. Some people are new to YouTube when they're watching videos or they find one on search engines, you kind of have to lead them to where you want them to go. It's really important that you can share your content in social because social is a huge indicator both for YouTube and for Google to know if something's important. So the more shares, likes, comments you can get on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, I would definitely suggest making sure you share all your videos and ask for engagement in all those different platforms. So views are extremely important to your video. So how do you get more views? Well, obviously sharing in social is gonna help increase view count. If you optimize properly, your, your hope is to also get seen in uh, more search engines so you're getting more views. Embedding your video both in a blog is a great suggestion. This is a great way to promote or uh, cross promote both pieces of content. Taking your video and embedding it in a blog and writing a small blog post about your video. Um, that's going to create an embed, which is um, which is similar to a backlink, um, and can help be a key indicator and build your authority as well. Um, embedding your videos on your website is a great idea too. It's good to have a home base for any of your type of content. So. I, what I see a lot of brands make a mistake on is that they'll shoot a video and they'll embed the video or they'll take the video file and upload it to their website and then they'll um, also upload it to YouTube. A better goal or a better objective would have been to have a home base for your video like YouTube and then embed that into your site. Um, the reason why is because the more views that it gets on your website, well those count to your views on YouTube and now you're helping your video SEO. You're also using YouTube 
um, which is um, a, a Google owned property on your website. And if your goal is search engine optimization on your website too, or your blog, um, that's gonna help increase your SEO for that property as well. So it's using two different types of marketing processes for um, to, to help both push, push them both through goals or funnels um, and increase your SEO for both. And the more views you can get, obviously, the more the, and the more shares, it's going to be a huge indicator. Here's just some examples of how we've embedded one in our blog before. And you can also embed it in a Facebook tab if you'd like. Um, that's something that I used to do all the time, especially when, uh, so obviously it's an older Facebook page in my example, but um, in, embed it in a tab. Or if you're using um, Facebook ads uh, for anything, you can embed a video on a, on a tab as well on that to get more views and increase your view count. Um, I've even played around with autoplay because you can autoplay um, some of these videos too on a tab on some or a website if you, if you like if that makes sense for your brand so it automatically starts playing and you gain that view count right when someone uh, clicks onto that page. So how do you get likes? How do you get shares? Um, just ask for them. I mean, annotations is a great way to do that, but also sharing it socially is a great way. At, you know, hey, if you like this video, click like. Um, Hey, if you like this part of my content, hit like. Um, I'm going to speed up just a little bit because I want to make sure that we hit all these other points. Um, creating a playlist is really important. Uh, create a playlist just like we were talking about creating categories. It's categorization of your different video content. So if you have different videos about different products, it's important to create a, a playlist, but make it keyword centric. Um, if it's about shoes and it's different types of shoes for each video, maybe, maybe your word is shoes. Or maybe it's different types of red shoes, maybe it's red shoes. Create a playlist that's relevant to the different videos within that playlist. Here's an example. Comments and video responses. Um, the more comments that you get, the more video responses, that's also going to help increase your video SEO. Um, a video response is like a comment, only it's in video format. Um, you, can, you can comment and video comment back on YouTube as well, and I'm sure there's a section about that in our social media university that you can look at. Um, but getting uh, comments and asking for comments is a great way to engage um, with users. Anytime that the key phrase can be used in the comments too, that would help. Obviously you can't necessarily ask them to put the key phrase in the location, but they're, just keep that in mind the more times that someone's sharing the key phrase in the comments, that's going to help your SEO. And video responses, if anybody can respond via video, um, that's, a, that's a huge plus too because it looks like people are really engaged with that video. Here's some examples of how that looks. And these are what video responses look like as well. Your age of your video. Obviously, your age is important for any type of SEO, so fresh content is very important. Um, I would just suggest making sure that you optimize the video. This is the main reason I put this in this slide. You have to optimize your video from the, right from the beginning before have a plan for your optimization before you even upload your video. A lot of people ask me, oh, can I take my video, should I take my video down? Can I optimize it after the fact? It's been, you know, a year. Um, there's kind of an equation that I use for that. Um, if you have a video that you, that you isn't optimized, but it's been up and it has some views, I would just weigh it out. How many views does it have? Does it have five views? Um, then, then, yeah, take it down, re-optimize it, and as long as it's evergreen content that you want to share with your audience. Um, if it has a lot of um, traction on its own, if it has thousands of views, well, there's probably not a point of doing video SEO because you probably already um, are gaining um, optimization, or maybe you've already did optimization and hit some of these factors um, without even knowing that you were doing it. So those are those are different things that I like to think about um, if you're considering um, taking an older video and optimizing it. just wanted to show where the view count can be seen and how many views that it has when you're making that analysis. Um, I'm gonna run through this really quick. Just make sure that your channel is optimized and the best way to make sure your channel is optimized is use the same brand name as much as possible if that's your true brand name. Um, a lot of times you see people use um, a different brand name in their channel. I know sometimes that your channel name can be taken. Keep in mind that if that is your true channel name, you have the ability to um, claim that through YouTube. There's a process. Um, trademark infringement that you can go through and, and that's listed on their website as well but try to use your brand name so it doesn't confuse users when they're trying to find you you want to make it as easy as possible for them to find your channel watch your videos decrease your video SEO um, but there's 
in the actual channel itself, there's a place that you can put a title, a description, an exact tag. Whatever your goal keywords are or your main goal keyword, like for instance, if you sell shoes, make sure to use that in your titles and descriptions so um, you're making your channel relevant, which is helping your videos be relevant as well. So here's an example of what that looks like. You can see the description that was written. Um, just This is the place that you would want to make sure that you have very specific goal keywords in to make your channel relevant. Um, there's a user profile too. Every account that has a channel is also associate, associated with a, um, a brand channel as well, a user profile. Um, optimize the, that if, if you possibly can too. There's an about section that you can add keywords to. So I'd make sure to say very specific words that are relevant, um, like we gave the shoe example in there as well. And here's an example of what that looks like. Subscribers. Subscribers are really important. Any, any way that you can encourage subscriptions is a plus. Um, whether you're asking for subscriptions on the actual video or maybe a blog post or um, when you're sharing it socially. Here's an example of what that looks like. You see you can hit the amount of subscribers that you actually have for your channel. The more subscribers means that the more people are kind of buying into your channel. Um, so that can definitely help increase SEO. And there's an annotation that you can create too um, with a link to your subscription button. Um, it's very easy, you just hit annotations and then you'll have a choice to um, put um, what type of annotation you want to create. One of them is for subscribers and you can have a link to your subscription button. Um, how do I get more favorites? We already kind of talked about that, just getting more likes and favorites. Um, just sharing it, ask somebody to favorite your video and just creating good content um, is a big plus too. But don't be afraid to ask people within annotations to do things, um, but, but do it in a fun way. Uh, make sure that you're not just saying, hey, click like. Ask them very specifically, comment on this video because, because of the question I'm asking or give me your answer below in the comments to a question you're asking in the video. Try to get them engaged with the video too so it doesn't feel like you're just asking them to, to do a process. Um, how do I get people to like my videos uh, or, or link to my videos, sorry. So the more inbound links you can get just like for your blog posts um, are extremely important. So creating relevant videos or for lack of a better term, link bait um, is a great way to get other people to link to the videos. If you have good relevant information that other businesses or other services can parallel with you, um, just make it you know readily available for them. Uh, send it to them on their Facebook pages and say, hey, thought this would be um, a great video that you might want to share with your audience or maybe even embed it in a blog post. Um, make it easy for other people to use your content um, when they're sharing content too. So three ways to measure. This is really important. So what do I look for to see if my optimization was working on YouTube? Well, I look at a lot of different things, but I'm going to keep it really simple right now. Um, I look at YouTube first. YouTube, if, if I put my keyword into YouTube and my video is populating, if not first, or very high, um, my goal is to, to get it to rank as high as possible. That's how I know that I did the right process for video optimization. Um, the next thing I look at w within a couple weeks after that is I look to see if Google Video actually is ranking my word, which means I do a Google search and I click video and I see is my video ranking there. And then eventually I start looking in Google search results, just putting my word into Google to see if my video is coming up in search results. Um, those are the three key indicators that I look at. I think it's really important to kind of understand that process because it's not really just about YouTube, it's about using YouTube to gain video SEO on all of these different platforms. Um, different people are looking in different places, but to achieve um, video ranking in just Google itself, by itself, especially on the first, if not the second page, um, can, can really catch a user's eye because now you have something that's going to feed them information that they're not having to search out. It's definitely different than, a, than um, a, an organic search result like they would normally see. Um, so you have a, a really good chance, or if not an increased chance, of getting their attention and feeding them that information and having a strong call to action. Um, whether it's a, a video overlay, um, which you can read more about in our SMU uni uh, University, um, or some kind of clickable link that you put below in your description to, to send them to that point of conversion um, to create more conversions or, or more subscriptions depending on what you're trying to accomplish or what your goal is. Here's some really good resources that I use too um, for video SEO. Um, Real SEO is one of my favorites. Um, they talk about not only good video optimization, but everything in between. Uh, Search Engine Land has great um, YouTube uh, information as well, or video SEO. Um, YouTube's blog is really great to learn because you can learn more about um, new um, 
things that they have coming out and how you can take advantage of that. And Splash Media Blog, um, the Splash Media U Blog or the Splash Media Blog, both have really good information about video SEO and video optimization. So just remember when you're doing SEO that it, it is a process. Think through the process first. Remember that goals are your most important before you ever start any process of SEO. You should have goals or any type of marketing. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're going to do a Q&A now if you have any questions um, about some of the things that I talked about. So I'm going to move my screen around for a second so I can see if you have any questions. So it could be any questions about anything that uh, we talked about or any out of the box questions that you have. Um, you can type them into the, the Q&A part and they'll pop up and I'll try my best to answer them. So no questions, no questions at all. Okay, well if we don't have any questions, I'm going to move on. Um, hopefully you gained a lot of knowledge from uh, both the video SEO and the blog SEO um, portion. Remember, um, there is a blog post about the Yoast plugin we were talking about, how to configure it properly. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our, um, to our SMU representatives. Um, they're here to support you as well. And um, have a great day, and thanks for uh, tuning in.